Sit. I forget. I forget his first name, but the, he was the leader of al-Qaeda in Yemen. Uh, he was taken out by a U.S. drone and a Hellfire missile in the desert uh, up in, uh, uh, out in uh, Ma'rib, I believe it was, or up in um, al Jalf, uh, up in that area. Uh, this was a combined U.S.-Yemeni operation to take him out. We had an agreement with the Yemenis that we would say nothing. We, uh, the United States government, would take no credit uh, take no uh, responsibility, we would basically turn any comment over to the government of Yemen. Uh, the agreed story was, got explosives in his car, and either somebody killed him, or they, they went off. You know, these, uh, so it goes. Unfortunately, the war on terror being where it was in, in December of 2002, our administration made the decision uh, that we would publicize our involvement in this, and I believe it was Deputy Secretary of Defense uh, Paul Wolfowitz who went on television and uh, I think with pictures showing the blot of, of, of uh, the black blot in the desert, which was all that was left, uh, uh, said uh, this is a lesson for all Al-Qaeda leaders around the world, wherever you are, we'll find you, we'll kill you. Your government was not pleased with us uh, for doing this, uh, and cooperation became more difficult after that. Uh, intel sharing is always difficult. Any, anybody in this room who's ever dealt with intel sharing knows how hard it is. Even if it's us and the Brits, it's not easy. Uh, it's tough with a country like Yemen. There's not a lot of mutual trust. Uh, so when an event like this happens, one that's extraordinarily sensitive, uh, that level of trust uh, uh, drops, and it harmed us. In 2003, we had the arrest and trial of the coal plotters, uh, including Jamal al-Badawi, uh, one of the, one of the uh, great escape artists in Yemeni history. He escaped from the Aden prison in 2003, was recaptured in 2003, tried, convicted, sentenced to death uh, in 2004, uh, just as I arrived there. As I arrived in 2004, our policies are starting to shift. There is a general recognition among analysts that Al-Qaeda has been, uh, if not defeated, because it's, how do you define victory, as, as we have learned? Uh, but in fact, it has been decimated, it has been disrupted, it has been largely pushed out of Yemen. And, and its effectiveness, its ability to carry out attacks in Yemen or to plan plot attacks against the United States or our interest around the world we believe was, was, was basically uh, uh, nil. Uh, I did not consider Al-Qaeda a threat in 2004. Uh, when I was there, I had the opportunity to travel quite a bit around the country, including to Ma'reb and Shebwa and up into El Jauf. Uh, uh, and uh, while we had a few threats against the embassy in those first year or two, uh, we never could tie them back to any organized group. We did not think it was a within Yemen threat. Our major security issue with the Yemeni government then was to try to stop the, uh, uh, the pipeline of foreign fighters, the recruitment of Yemenis to go via Syria mostly into Iraq and fight with them um, uh, uh, in, in Iraq. Um, but it was not. Our, our focus and uh, my instructions when I were out were to make this a more normal relationship. We need to go beyond the security and the intel relationship with the Yemenis. We've had a great success with them. We need to focus on development, economy, building democracy, opening systems. Um, uh, we still had a fairly substantial training program for Yemeni CT forces. We had a small FMS program purchasing weapons. Uh, if you remember, this is the first year of the El Houthi insurrection, as we called it then, and I think we still call it, largely an internal manner, very small, government of Yemen confident they were going to be able to take it out. They wanted more of our help. We were, frankly, unwilling to, to help them directly in, the, in, the, uh, in this uh, fight. Um, the main thing they wanted from us were armored personnel carriers because their soldiers were being picked off as they went up the mountains up into Sada by the... Uh, uh, sharpshooters, the Al-Houthi sharpshooters. Um, the South is not an issue in 2004. It's a political issue. It's an economic issue. But there's no sense that there's a southern secessionist movement uh, in Yemen, that this somehow there is a political threat to Ali Abdullah's uh, government uh, emanating from the South. Indeed, I had many arguments with him and with key advisors that 
that you need to develop the South faster, specifically aid in port. Uh, uh, and yes, you'll have a political challenge, but it'll be a legitimate political challenge at some point. If you don't do that, you may end up where he is today with a rather serious uh, and possibly violent political challenge emanating from the South. So Al-Qaeda is basically, uh, basically not on our agenda, not high on our agenda in Yemen. Uh, that changes in 2006 when 23 of uh, the Al-Qaeda escaped from uh, the maximum security prison in Sana'a. Uh, an escape that actually occurred. There was a lot of suspicion, I think. Unfortunately, not without justification that there had been uh, a great deal of cooperation. Perhaps these guys were let out. Uh, I saw the tunnel. We actually participated in the investigation of the escape to some extent. Uh, and I'm convinced that while there certainly was a degree of negligence, corruption in the prison, a fear in the prison, and some really stupid prison policies, i.e. putting all these guys in the same suite, closing the door and letting them do whatever they wanted to, including digging a tunnel to the mosque, uh, uh, there was no high-level collusion in this. I, I, I think uh, President Saleh was genuinely distressed uh, when he learned of this escape, I happened to be with him the day after as we were concerned about it and he was calling in various officials from the security and uh, I thought he was going to shoot them, but he, he did not. It's a, it's a, it's a, new, uh, a new Yemen. Um, uh, this Im immediately Al-Qaeda begins to, to reform. Uh, the escapees, including Jamal al-Badawi, who's now escaped for the second time uh, from a Yemeni uh, prison, uh, and others, uh, 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 get out into the countryside using tribe, old tribal connections, uh, old uh, connections, uh, managed to lay low a number of them, but half of them were captured or turned themselves in. A couple of them blew themselves up in a September attack against oil facilities in Ma'reb and uh, the port uh, at, uh, at, the, uh, uh, at the port up, up near Mukalla. Um, and a couple of them were killed in a shootout. They, they, during that, the attack on the, on the uh, oil facilities, there was also a planned attack on the Hada uh, residence compound, which is where, where a lot of the embassy staff lived and a lot of foreigners lived. That attack was thwarted, and the guys who had planned it were killed in a shootout in Sana'a. Um, but half of, them re and the, uh, half of them remained, and I think they began to form the nucleus of, of the resurgence of of, uh, of uh, Al-Qaeda. Jamal al-Badawi is captured again uh, in 2007. Um, his sentence, however, is promptly commuted from death to 15 years. And then, shortly after I left, shortly after we had, had achieved what was our, uh, sort of our, our headline uh, uh, our headline um, uh, development goal with Yemen, which is we managed to get them into the Millennium Challenge account and the threshold of the Millennium Challenge account. It was a very, very difficult go. A uh, $30 million initial pro uh, program focused on rule of law and anti-corruption in Yemen. Uh, we, I accompanied Salah to the White House in March of 2007, made the announcement with President Bush uh, Three months later, he decided not only to commute Jamal al-Badawi's sentence, but to release him uh, into the custody of 